Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixim Perfect. How are you doing? Let me know in the comments. I hope you're having a great day and making it a beautiful one. In this video, I'm going to share with you a high-end and advanced technique to correct blotchy skin in Photoshop. By the way, you can also use this technique to correct discoloration, unevenness in the skin, and a lot more. Now, keep in mind, since this is an advanced technique, it's not going to be easy. But trust me on this, it's super simple to do if you follow along. Also, I can assure you that you're going to have a lot of fun applying it. By the way, the great part about this technique is that it always works. Why? Because it doesn't use any AI, it uses HI, human intelligence. And by the end of it, I'm sure that you're going to look for your images where you can apply this technique. It's so cool. So I cannot wait to share it with you. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop, and if you wish to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you, my friend, already know what to do. Check the links in the description. Now, the very first thing that we need to check in our image is whether it's 8-bit or 16-bit. Now, the way to check it is by looking at the top. It says RGB 8, which means it's 8-bit. Another way to check is by going to Image, Mode, have a look. 8-bit is checked, which means it's 8-bit. Why are we checking this? Because we're going to be applying frequency separation here, but with a little bit of twist. We'll get to that later. But for right now, I recommend that even if your image is in 8-bit, I recommend working with 16 bits per channel. Why is that? Because with 16-bit, you get a lot more headroom. Now, it doesn't mean that your image will increase in quality if it was already in 8-bit. But as you begin to apply more and more adjustments, you're not going to have any issues such as banding with 16-bit. All right. The next thing we do is applying the layers for frequency separation. By the way, we have an action for it. You can download the action right here or check the links in the description. So let's open up actions. If you cannot find it right here, let's go to window and make sure actions is checked. Now, according to your image, this one we just converted to 16-bit. So let's play 16-bit. If you wanted to work with 8-bit anyway, play the 8-bit one. So let's choose 16-bit, hit play. Now, this is crucial. Zoom onto your image. With the Gaussian blur, take the radius all the way to the left-hand side. By the way, if you're interested in how frequency separation works, you can watch this video with all the theory and explanation. It has everything you need to know. Let's take the Gaussian blur all the way to the left-hand side and slowly and gradually increase it. You might ask, where do I need to stop? Well, you need to stop at the point where you just see the details that you want to correct. Does that make sense? I'm going to repeat that for you in another way. Stop at just the point where you only see the things that you want to correct. In this case, it's the blotchiness. If the radius is too low, we see the skin texture. We don't want to correct that. We want to have it intact. So let's go ahead and increase it even further. Right now, the skin texture is gone, but there are certain aspects of texture that we do want to keep. These are not the details that we want to correct. So let's go even further. I feel that in my opinion, 6.4 would be a nice number to be at. Now, the more the value of the radius, the lesser the control you have, the lesser the work that you have to do. The lesser the value of radius, the more work you have to do to recreate all of those textural aspects of the image. So keep in mind, radius is also an artistic choice. More the radius, lesser the control, and lesser work you have to do. Less the radius, more control, but more work you have to do. So also artistically choose what's the best for your situation. So for 6.4, we're going to hit OK. So we have the frequency separation layers created. By the way, to check if the frequency separation layers were properly created, just turn off the group and turn on the group. If you don't see any change, this is perfect. Let's open up the group. Here you will see your image divided into two frequencies. High frequency, this has only the texture information, and low frequency, only the color information. A good way to remember this is just remembering your high school physics. What does high frequency look like? High frequency looks something like this, right? It has sudden changes. All right. Now, what does low frequency look like? Low frequency looks something like this. The wavelength is higher. It has slower changes. So when you look at an image, what changes rapidly? Texture or color? Texture changes rapidly because if you look at any surface, texture is something like this. It's changing rapidly. What changes slowly? The color and the tone. That is why the high frequency layer has the texture information and the lower frequency layer has the color information. This is a way that you can use to remember it. So right now, we only want to deal with the color information to remove the blotchy aspects. The way to do it is, first of all, turning off the high frequency so that you only see the color information. And now, just to have a backup, make a copy of the low frequency layer because we're going to be editing that. 
So with the low frequency layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J to make a duplicate. Let's break down the process even further. Let's understand this carefully. First of all, we divided the image into high frequency and low frequency. High frequency has all the texture information and low frequency has all the color information. Now, we are talking only about low frequency. Low frequency has the blotchiness information. Now again with blotchiness, we have two aspects to it, color and brightness. Let's talk about brightness. The blotchy areas can either be brighter or darker than the surrounding areas, right? Let's talk about color. The blotchy areas can have a different color compared to the surrounding areas. So first of all, let's deal with the brightness and then you're gonna deal with color. So to remove all the color distractions as we are working with this image, click on the adjustment layer and then choose solid color. Choose any color that doesn't have any saturation like white, black, gray and hit OK. And then change the blend mode from normal to color. This takes away all the colors and now we only have to worry about correcting these uneven areas. Now you might ask Unmesh, why didn't you just create a hue saturation adjustment layer and took away the saturation? That won't work. It doesn't show the human perception of color. So here is a gradient from bright yellow to bright red. If you go to the color picker, have a look at it. Both have the brightness at 100%, right? Definitely the hue is different, but the brightness in all of the areas is 100%. That is the mathematical way of looking at it. But let's say you print it and show it to a kid and ask him, which area of the image do you think is brighter? He or she would probably say the top area is brighter than the bottom area. And that's how we perceive it, right? But if you go ahead and create a hue saturation adjustment layer, and if you just decrease the saturation, it all becomes gray. And it's a false perception of brightness levels. So instead, that is why we create a solid color adjustment layer with gray or black or anything that has saturation zero and hit OK. I'm sorry about that. So we do that, hit OK and change the blend mode to color. Now take a look at this perception. It's different. So this is absolutely flat and this isn't. By the way, if you're thinking, why do we have this weird line here? It's because of Photoshop's new perceptual gradient. If you create the classic gradient like we used to a couple of versions earlier, uh, it would be different. So let's take the gradient, let's choose the classic method and now let's drag the same gradient like this. And now when you turn this on, see, it's smoother. I don't know what people at Adobe are doing. Anyway, back to our document, let's go to the low frequency copy layer and let's name this patch. That's what we're gonna do. Let's select the patch tool right here, make sure the patch is normal and all you do is just select the uneven areas and just drag it to an even area. That's all. Press Ctrl or Command D. Use this technique to correct all of these unevenness. Now keep in mind, we don't have to remove the overall texture right here. Some of it is desirable. Keep in mind not to get overboard with it and remove every texture making it extremely smooth. Don't do that mistake. I have done it in the past. The goal is to make her skin look natural, not like a Barbie doll or like somebody who has gotten plastic surgery a thousand times. It may not be just the blotchiness that you want to fix, but also fix the surrounding areas to blend in properly. You know, there comes a time when you just enjoy the process so much that you get into a zone and you don't even realize how the hours flew by. But I think this is enough. This is just about 10 minutes of doing this. Now let's turn on the high frequency and take a look. Let's turn off color fill. Take a look at the before and after. So here's the before, here it's the after that, my friend, is a massive improvement. Now we still have the color issues. We have just tackled the brightness issues. Let us move on to the color aspects of it. Let's turn off high frequency. By the way, this was a luminosity check layer. More about check layers in this video. Let's name it accordingly. Organization is important. I get usually nervous when typing in front of camera, so forgive me for it. All right, there we go. To see the color, we need to create another check layer where we just see the color. And to do it, this would be similar. Let's create a solid color adjustment layer. And this time choose just gray, 50% gray. So you can change the brightness to about 50%. Saturation and hue can remain at zero. Hit OK. And then change the blend mode from normal to luminosity this time. So that way you only see the colors and nothing else. You don't see the changes in brightness levels. You don't see the highlights and shadows, just plain colors. Now when you look at it, look at her cheek. Definitely, it's different from the rest of the areas. So we need to bring it in alignment to the rest of the areas. And the first way to do that is by using a hue saturation adjustment layer. So just above the patch layer, let's create a hue saturation adjustment layer. We want to target this area. So with the help of the hand right there, just click on in there. That's it. 
take the hue and the saturation all the way to the right hand side. Now I'm going to make the properties dialog box a little bit wider so that we can precisely select the range that we would be targeting. Let's make it a little shorter as well. Now let's look at the cheek of the image. Make the range very, very narrow. So this is the range of colors that we are targeting. Move the range around to see where the cheek falls. So it starts from right here. Let's expand it. It stops right about there. So from here, we're going to make the transition smoother by taking the inside slider a little more inside. The more gap you have between these two sliders on the extremes, the softer the transition between the areas that are targeted and the areas that are not. So let's make it even softer like that. That seems about right. And let's extend it to the left hand side. There you go. Let's bring the saturation and the hue all the way back to normal and let's play with it. So if we move the hue to the right, it gets closer. Let's keep it at plus four. Let's adjust the saturation. Let's take it a little to the left hand side and increase the lightness. See, it's getting closer and closer. Let's keep it at this. Probably let's play with saturation a little bit as well. We can always adjust this later. But for right now, let's turn off the color fill layer. This was the color check layer. And we only want it in this particular area. So how do we do that? With the help of the mask. But before we do it, let's take a look at the before and after of the hue saturation. So here's the before, here's the after. It creates this weird edge. So we need to go back right here, go back to reds to see the changes and play with the range because it's creating this weird look. All right, let's make the transition even softer. Now let's take a look at the before and after. Here's the before, here's the after. It's much softer, much better. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I, take the brush, take a soft round brush and just paint on the areas which you need to fix. I think that's more than enough. And now you can go back to the settings and play with it. Let's make the properties narrower again. Let's go to reds to see the changes and play with lightness. You want to keep the cheeks a little red. That is natural. And there you go. Here's the before, here's the after. Let's take a look at the overall before and after. Let's turn on high frequency. So here is the before. Take a look. And here is the after. Now let me share with you one more artistic step to it. If you want to do a little more color correction manually by painting, here's how to do that. So let's create one more layer on top of it. Change the blend mode from normal to color. Now before we start painting with colors, Choose the eyedropper tool and make sure sample size is larger, like 5x5, 3x3, so that it doesn't sample from just one point. And this one really wouldn't even matter if you turn off the high frequency layer because the layer is blurred anyway. So anyway, let's take the brush, make sure the flow is a little lower, probably at about 10%, and just start painting with the colors that you want. So let's say you don't like the colors in this particular area, so you would take the brush, Take a sample of colors of the area that you want to replace it with. So let's say I want to replace it with this color and start painting over that. You can also mix colors. Similarly right here as well. If there's a discoloration, sample a color that you want to replace it with and just paint over. That's all. Zoom out and take a look. Sometimes you also want to add warmth to the areas that have a little more yellowness to it. So let's paint a little there as well. So take a look, here's the before. There was this weird color shift right here. Also, this area was very discolored. Now when you turn it on, this area gets the warmth and everything gets so equalized. So let's turn on high frequency. Now you can take the time to do the rest of the image, but this was just a demo. I hope you enjoyed it. Here's the before and here is the after. So that's how to fix blotchiness, uneven skin or discolored skin in Photoshop. The process is very simple. First of all, we will divide the image into high frequency and low frequency. High frequency has the texture information and low frequency has the color information. Now the color information is the information that we need to correct in this case. So when it comes to the color information, there are again two aspects to it the brightness aspect to it and the color aspect to it. Now when it comes to brightness, you might want to equalize everything. Now you can use any method that you like. In this case, we used the patch method. You can also paint over it. You can also use the mixer brush. That's all up to you. So for the patch method, we first created a luminosity check layer to take away the colors so that we don't get distracted. Then with the help of the patch tool in a backup copy, of course, we corrected all of those unevenness. After doing that, the colors started becoming an issue. Take a look. It's still red. 
So we move to the color aspects of it. For the color aspects, we used hue saturation to target just that red area. And sometimes it can also select other areas which are red. So we might have to use masks. So with that, we took care of that area. And on top of it, if you wanted to correct discoloration in some areas or wanted to equalize the colors all around the skin, you can simply create a new layer change the blend mode of that layer to color and take the brush take a sample of the color that you want to replace the discolored area or the weird colored area with and just paint over it and this just equalizes everything and adds warmth to discolored areas and you can use it to color any area with any color you want i hope this video helped you and if it did make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips tricks or tutorials i would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and amazing people for supporting pix imperfect on patreon and helping keep pix imperfect free for everybody forever thank you so much for all your time thank you for your support i'll see you in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating what can i do